Okay, dudes and dudettes, it's time for another episode review of the TMNT cartoon by yours truly, Double RPG. We are nearing the beginning of Season 2, and I still have this episode and the Season 1 finale to finish. Today's episode is a shell of a good time to be had as we get back on track with the main storyline that leads up to the Krang's true invasion and the union between them and the Foot Clan. Let's not waste any time and get on with the review of Episode 24, called Operation Breakout. Episode 24 begins with Donatello and Raphael having a sparring session while Leo, Mikey, and April watch while Master Splinter takes Judge. The brawl has Raph taunting Donnie to quit, but the tech savvy manages to get the upper hand on him so that he can impress April. Too bad it doesn't work for long as the hothead brings the match to a draw via submission hold. Donatello becomes infuriated at his brother for not coming under the impression that he was trying to impress April, much to which Raph shrugs him off for thinking that he still has a shot with her. The argument doesn't last very long as April receives an email from an unknown party that comes with an encrypted audio file that no one can make out. However, Donnie takes the laptop to work on the message in his lab while the others and April are sleeping during the midnight hours. The encrypted message is finally translated and Don learns that April's father, Kirby O'Neill, has been taken to another crank facility underneath a car repair shop with the map showing that location. Donnie uses his T-phone to copy the map and makes it a unilateral mission to go save April's father to prove to Raph that he still has a shot. As Donnie makes his way to the facility within the early morning hours, his brothers wake up in the sewer lair and wonder where the tech savvy went to, and they go to his lab to see that he worked on the message from April's email. They almost have a hard time trying to figure out how to decipher the audio file, but a little hard shake of the laptop from Raph got the message out and the location locked for them. April heard her father's message from near the entrance, but Splinter tells her not to worry about that as he starts to train her in listening to the silence. She then hears something coming from within the tunnels of the sewers, but doesn't know what it is as she uses this opportunity to sneak off and find it. Back at the car shop, Donnie luckily makes his way to the facility after having a short fight with some Krang, and then the scene switches over to Leo and his brothers making their way to Donnie's location and wondering why he went off by himself. Raph admits that it was because of what he said at the beginning to make Donnie go as a one-man army in this rescue operation, and he pretty much gets punished and berated by Leo with Mikey disheartened by his brother's actions. Back at the Crank facility, Donatello manages to reach Kirby's cell after bypassing security and deactivating the prison cell locks while the alien race watches from behind the scenes. As the two are beginning to leave, another enemy starts to haunt them from the shadows before making an appearance. A giant mutant newt. It starts to attack our fleeing hero and doctor as well as destroying any Crank droids coming for it, and Donnie decides to nickname the mutant as the Neutralizer. Get it? Newt? Neutralizer? Good pun, right? Right? Ugh, never mind. Meanwhile, April is still in pursuit of what she heard from within the sewers, and she comes across a crane communication device and takes it away while hiding from the aliens patrolling around. At that time, Leo and the others arrive to support Donnie and Kirby with their escape, and they hightail it back to the surface with the neutralizer still hot on their shells. Our heroes manage to fight off against that creature, and that neutralizer is truly a mutant of its word, as it proves to be too much for our heroes to fight. So, Mikey manages to drop a van from within the car shop onto the critter, and our heroes manage to leave safely. Too bad they probably won't be safe next time as the neutralizer still stands strong. Back at the sewer lair, April thoroughly examines the communication device while Splinter is very interested to know how April heard the device, but he could not. It could be the reason why the Krang need her, but her hypothesis is put to rest when she sees the turtles and her father return to which she becomes very happy to see him. Raph rubs it into April that Donnie did everything to get her father out, even though the others helped him in which Donnie stands by. And he gets a hug from his crush, which causes him to faint. Score! Meanwhile, at the TCRI building, the Shredder makes his appearance to form an alliance with the Krang, and Saki mentions that his prisoner nearly interfered with his mission, but the Krang remarked that it didn't prevent Kirby O'Neill from being taken as well as having him as their trump card to succeed in their plan, to which Shredder concurs that vengeance will be done for both the Foot and for them as well. Finally, at the sewer lair, April and her father have a strong father-daughter moment as they are happy to be back together again. As they embrace and unbeknownst to April, Kirby's eye appear red with an evil look on his face. Oh boy! Looks like he turned out to be the Krang's trump card after all. Too bad as we don't get to see any more as the episode ends on a strong cliffhanger. Man, that was just wow. Oh my gosh! This episode had to be on par with the delivery that Episode 9 managed to achieve. Just the delivery in this episode's plot that brings in a strong cliffhanger like that oh, just gives me goosebumps as I feel that the season finale will truly deliver. 
I'll get to my thoughts on that in the next two videos, but for now, let's take a look at the good stuff and then the bad stuff. First of all, I liked how Donnie's ambition to make April like him even more went in full circle. I mean, you have Raph criticizing him for believing the impossible, Donnie makes it a mission to go rescue her father, and coming back while Raph redeems himself to give his brother all the credit for what he did for her. When you think about it, the show seems to focus more on Donatello a lot because of how much he is trying to help someone he really likes to make her happy. Then again, it would probably make sense since this is the first season after all. Next up, the Neutralizer was a pretty awesome villain as well. I definitely see the Neutralizer being the best new villain that has been introduced for this show when compared to Snakeweed, Spider Bites, Cockroach Terminator, and the atrocious Justin. Too bad it doesn't have Lewis Black voicing him though. This mutant newt is definitely a true adversary that proved to be too hard for our heroes to take down, and I somehow compare him more to Sabretooth from the X-Men as he was a pretty tough foe for Wolverine to fight. I look forward to seeing the Neutralizer in more episodes and even in Season 2. Now I may say that the action was the best thing around, but I have saved the best for last. The cliffhanger. That moment you see Kirby have red eyes and an evil look on his face makes you wonder what the Krang really have up their sleeve. It's something that's not going to be very pretty or beneficial towards April and our heroes, but that full answer won't come until the next episode. Sadness! If there was something I have to complain about, then I can only think of possibly either one or two things as this episode was pretty solid. I mentioned that the action wasn't the best as it was pretty light with most of the crane getting defeated by the neutralizer and our heroes having a hard time fighting it. I guess there is a time when even the turtles can't honorably defeat an opponent and they have to end up using a dirty tactic to get away. Don't get me wrong, having that van drop on the mutant was pretty sick. But really? You couldn't maybe push the creature back in the hole and just leave it like that? Oh well. And probably the only thing that does come to mind is that the episode only makes you wish for more beyond the cliffhanger. I'm not kidding. Episode 24 was really good that the urge to watch the finality hits a huge high for anyone who sees this calm before the storm. I'm not kidding as I am definitely awarding this episode a solid 10 out of 10. I stand true to my word about how this episode delivered a strong presentation, and it does stand neck and neck to episode 9 as I feel they tie for my favorite episode of season 1. Go check it out, and be prepared to have a great smile on your face, my friends. Cowabunga dudes, my review of episode 24 of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has come to a wrap. Tune in next time and prepare to come out of your shells as we take a look at the one-hour two-part season finale called Booyaka Showdown. The ultimate invasion of the Krang on planet Earth is about to commence, their trump card with Kirby O'Neill will be shown, and the master of ninjutsu finally has his first showdown with his arch nemesis, the Shredder. Check out my next two reviews that will cover part one and part two of the season one finale next time. In the meantime though, be sure to rate this video, leave comments to let me know what you thought, add it to your favorites if you really liked it, and hit that subscribe button for more content coming from me in the future. This is Double RPG signing off, and I'll see you next time for the end of season one. Booyakasha my friends, Booyakasha!